Hi, in this video demonstration we're going to take the opacity masks we made in one of the others uh, and uh, we're going to use the to create a plant uh, hopefully fairly low poly that we can uh, use to populate either game worlds or uh, uh, animated scenes alike here uh, we're going to do this, uh, the low poly method, because the high poly method would net us millions and millions of polygons if we were to do uh, foliage, plants, and leaves correctly. Uh, so we're going to try and use our opacity masks and our texturing skills to uh, kind of sidestep that whole uh, ordeal with uh, millions and millions of polygons. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to kind of get started here by creating uh, both our texture, our shader, uh, and a leaf and then we're going to try and use uh, a couple of little different things that we may have may or may not have talked about before uh, to finish modeling and creating that plant there. Uh, so let's see, let's let's initially, let's go ahead and create a, a plane here to get started uh, on our create tab geometry under the standard primitives here uh, and in my top top viewport here I'm going to go ahead and create kind of a long rectangular uh, plane here and then hop over to my modify tab uh, where we can adjust these things. Uh, let's see, uh, let's go about maybe 120 over you know, 90 just to get uh, get that size. What we might want to do in, in the future here is uh, check out our masks, uh, the, the images we created in Photoshop to really see how big they were. Uh, in this case our diffuse map we've done uh, 675 by 900 uh, so, you know, we can kind of divide that by 10 and, and maybe do uh, uh, 67 by 90 here, right? Uh, let's go with 90 over 67.5. Uh, and that should give us about the same uh, size here as our image was in the first place that we can then uh, play around with there a little bit. Uh, we may come back, uh, let me zero this out, we may come back and add some more segments here later, but for right now, all we need is one to get this uh, truly moving on us. Uh, and then we're going to go open up our material editor. Uh, M on your keyboards to open that up. You can also find it uh, on your main toolbar up here at the top. And here we are. We're in our compact material editor. We'll uh, start there. Uh, where we've got two masks we created in Photoshop. An opacity mask and we've got a diffuse map. Let's go with the one we know well enough first. Uh, under our diffuse, let's hit that uh, none channel button. You can also find it on your maps down here. Hit that none channel button to open up the material map browser. And then under our standard textures, we're just going to find bitmap because we're using an outside image for this. And then we need to go and find where it is that we saved uh, this stuff. Let's see, module 7. Here we go. And find my fern underscore diffuse map. Uh, which should show up on our texture exactly as a picture should be wrapped around a sphere there. Uh, we can go ahead and, and, and hit that go to parent to back out. We don't need to make any changes in inside our bitmap at all. Uh, and then we can go ahead and make sure that we've turned on the toggle switch here for the show shaded materials in viewport so that whatever we put this on, it should show up now. Uh, and then I can click, drag, and drop it over here on our plane. Again, if that's uh, show shaded material map in viewport is not toggled on, we would see just kind of a flat gray. Uh, toggling it on, we actually get to see an image of our leaf here. Let me turn the grid off so that we can kind of see what we're doing a little bit better. There we go. Uh, our next uh, task will be we're going to come over here and talk about our opacity channel. Uh, while we can kind of turn the visibility up and down, uh, just based on a number here, uh, a lot of times, especially if we want to get uh, kind of a high amount of detail or a specific cutout shape, we need to use the channel button uh, to the right hand side of it. Uh, you can also find it, your opacity channel down here in the maps rollout, where everything kind of gives us a nice stack of uh, different things that we can do. Uh, and we're going to click that none channel button for that. Uh, once again, we're going to choose bitmap because we're using an outside image that we created either from Photoshop or our cameras or, or whatever and I'm going to find the fern underscore mask and load it into that opacity channel. Now the way these opacity channels work is on a grayscale, just like a lot of things in 3D Studio, uh, where white will be completely opaque, meaning, meaning we'll be able to see it fully. Black will be completely transparent, which means it'll be completely invisible, and gray is varying uh, steps in between, uh, partially visible, etc. 
Uh, we've got just black and white, uh, white for our leaves and black for our background, which means we're going to get this cutout shape uh, happening on our leaf here. So let's load in that fern mask, say open up. Uh, it should immediately uh, make everything disappear according to that grayscale image here. Now we've got just this leaf kind of hovering out in the middle of nowhere here. Uh, all nice and, and perfectly cut out here. Uh, at this point uh, is where we may want to uh, take a look at exactly how we want this to uh, to look. It's awfully straight right now, so we might we might need to add a few polygons here. Let's go ahead and add maybe maybe even just five or you know it depends. If you want a, a real low poly game, probably four is enough. If you want something that's a little bit more uh, accurate to a bend, we can go as high as uh, length segments of six. Uh, we don't have to add any in, in width, or we could go uh, as far as adding, you know, up to four and bend it in two different directions. Uh, we'll go ahead with uh, the six in one and the none in the other for right now. We can always uh, do more later. And from here, I kind of want to uh, use these segments that we just added to maybe give our, our leaf a nice overall arc. Uh, in order to do this properly, I kind of want to move. Notice how the the pivot point here is right in the middle of our leaf, uh, so we're making we're just going to make placing it a little bit difficult. So first things first, I'm going to go over to the hierarchy tab. That's the third one over. I'm going to turn on my effect pivot only here, uh, and I'm going to just kind of scoot this pivot point to the end where that branch begins, uh, and I might even you know center it right above that branch where it hits uh, on the outside of our plane there. Then I want to remember to turn my effect pivot only off there. We can come back to the modify tab now and from our modifier list let's add a bend modifier, good old bend modifier, which should put our center right where that pivot point is now. If not we can always open up the bend, grab our center uh, and move it around to wherever, to wherever we like it as well, but it tries to put it around that uh, pivot point in the first place. Uh, we can increase the angle amount here, go something extreme to begin with, like 120. Uh, nothing's happening because we're probably bending it around, along the wrong axis. So we may have to, see there we go, or there we go, and we can see how this gizmo is, is attempting to bend uh, in a couple of different ways. Let's go ahead and choose X here, and then select our gizmo from our sub-object list, and our rotate tool over here. Uh, now anytime I rotate I like to turn on, depending uh, on how exact I need to be, I like to turn on my angle snap just so that I don't uh, mess myself up here in the future. And what I want to do is kind of just rotate this about 90 degrees uh, and you can see now that uh, that uh, leaf is bending the proper direction that we want. Then I grab my move tool and just kind of move it back into place. And maybe even my scale tool to make sure that it uh, kind of the proper length and size here. Uh, a little bit less of an angle. We'll go back to zero for right now, and we can uh, we can really kind of try and get this gizmo to fit our leaf a little bit nicer. Let's scale that in there. At least closer to the shape. Good deal. Then we can unselect our gizmo, turn that angle back up here where because of uh, my rotation of the gizmo, my, my center point here has, has also changed. So we're going to need to uh, pull that back to maybe about where it starts because our leaves bend from the location that they grow out of that center, the trunk, or, or the main stalk of the plant here. Uh, so we're going to try and center that thing over that uh, initial uh, point there. And now I probably don't need quite as much, maybe only about a 45 degree uh, bend, uh, maybe even as much as, you know, 65 degree, but not terrible, uh, huge amount here. Uh, I want to remember to unselect my sub-object. Always remember to turn that off. It's kind of like leaving the stove on. Eventually you're going to burn down the house. And since my angle snap is still on and I've got my rotate tool here, I can just kind of curve that leaf uh, up a little bit. Take a look at my uh, uh, current level there. Uh, and now we've got this, this nice leaf with a kind of an arc or a bend to it. Uh, now, remember, we could go back down to our plane here and uh, add in a few width segments as well. Uh, and maybe even right-click, copy, and paste that bend. Uh, and then grab that gizmo and uh, 
flip it around the other direction here, right? Uh, we might even be better off just adding a brand new bend on top there uh, and swapping it over to the X axis. Where we get a little bit of that uh, bend there as well. Uh, remember, you know, and, and the more, of course, segments, the better off that bend is going to be. Of course, the, the more segments we add, we're kind of defeating the purpose of our low poly. Uh, so for this time, let's just kind of turn the one on and get rid of the other. I just wanted to show you that, you know, you can get some, some extra bend in there to make some things look a little bit more natural. From here, we've got this uh, nice arcing branch with some leaves on it that we can use to create a plant. Uh, we're going to create that plant. We could start uh, you know, holding down shift and making some copies uh, just using our rotate and our move tool. Or we can use another tool uh, that uh, is going to work fairly nice for us and maybe maybe add things a little bit quicker called our array tool. Uh, the array, make sure you've got your leaf selected. Uh, it also matters as to what viewport you've got these selected in. Uh, I've got mine selected in my perspective view, uh, which means that the z-axis goes up and down and our rotation for the z-axis goes all the way around. Uh, if I do it in this view, then our, our z-axis has, has kind of switched to go uh, back to front now uh, from the front view. So it does matter. Uh, the top view or the perspective view is best to do this in for plants. I've got my perspective view, got my leaf selected. Let's go up to our tools menu and find the array tool, which opens up this rather complex or complicated looking dialog box, but it's really not that uh, complicated. There's just a lot of number fields. Uh, so we're going to take a look at some of these settings here. We've got two choices, incremental or total. Uh, the total side kind of works in units, degrees, and percentages, whereas the incremental side uh, works solely in, in units here. Uh, we've got three axes on either side. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and we want to use this array via the rotation here. So if I hit this little uh, arrow over to the totals, uh, and then in my, my z-axis, I put in a total of 360 degrees. Uh, that means it's going to duplicate, uh, based on this count number down here, uh, in a 360 degree array. Uh, if I go ahead and hit the preview button, we see what happens here. Uh, and I can reduce the amount here, the count, uh, maybe six or five. It's going to work a little bit better for us right here off the top. Uh, but it's, it's going around this pivot point. So if your pivot point was in the middle, Uh, it would uh, it would spin around the center of this leaf. So another another great reason to uh, change that pivot point there uh, as well. And then we can go ahead and say okay. Then we've got our first uh, few plant leaves here. We may want to uh, you know mark. Uh, we've got our first one here, which is good. But maybe in some of these others, we might want to actually kind of come in here and maybe tilt just to add some some character to these things. Uh, again, I can change my rotation axis. Right now it's set to view. If I come up here to the top on our main toolbar and take a look at the uh, selection here, the reference coordinate system, I can change view to local and then I can kind of tilt our leaves a little bit differently or a little bit better based on that. And we just kind of give them a little bit of variety here. And there we go. Our plant's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to grab that first one again, uh, plane one, because I did leave it straight for a specific reason. And uh, let's kind of uh, hold down shift now and rotate it up a little ways, kind of like this. And then maybe we can change our, our axes back to the view and just rotate it over a little bit. And maybe even scale it uh, based on our local. We can kind of scale this one make it a little skinnier, maybe overall a little smaller as we create our newer leaves toward the top here. With this new one selected, I can get my rotate tool again here and go back up to the tools array and uh, try this again, maybe spin it around a different uh, direction. That's why I kind of offset it here a little bit so we've got that. Maybe I give it six leaves to go around uh, this time and say okay. I could do the same thing. I can spend some time uh, you know, shifting these uh, a little bit in or out just to give some uh, variety to my plant here. There we go. 
Uh, and then I can uh, select that that uh, same same idea here. I can even go down to the original one again, and uh, do one more step up further. Make a copy. Hold down Shift to make that copy, uh, and then overall maybe shrink that in, and maybe even thin it up even a little bit more. And at this point, you know, I can do another array, or or uh, you know, maybe I can use my mirror tool to mirror one of these axes, tell it to make a copy. So we just kind of go back and forth a little bit here. Uh, maybe this copy I can kind of go up a little bit more. Uh, hold down shift maybe and use my rotate tool since I want to maybe place these ones a little bit more specifically uh, as well as maybe kind of try giving us some different sizes uh, of leaves based on kind of a degree of randomness here. There we go. Hold down shift. I'll make another copy here, maybe. Maybe tilt this one forward a bit. And maybe make this one kind of a shorter, stubbier leaf. Maybe fatten it up just a just a hair. Until we get what looks and appears to be a pretty darn decent uh plant there. All we need now is some some lights and some ground, and we can we can literally floor with these guys. Uh in the future here we could we could create this into uh, turn this all into one object uh, maybe by selecting our original leaf there and adding uh, an edit poly modifier maybe just using the attach here to uh, kind of attach all of our other leaves and now we've got just uh, one big happy family Oops, looks like I have a whole bunch of instances But there's our plant. Undo, undo, undo there. Right? I can always right click, convert to, editable poly, and do the same thing there as well. Uh, maybe attach all my other planes together. And now I've got just one plant that I can move around and place all over the place. Maybe use a scatter tool to, to fill out a forest. Again, in the future, you may want to make a hell of a lot more than one diffuse and opacity map for a full plant. Uh, this looks pretty good, but it would look better if we had uh, some leaves that maybe were kind of dying toward down here toward the bottom, some that may be a darker green or a different uh, pattern as far as the leaves uh, and the shapes made out uh, here. But uh, this is our strategy, and this is how uh, kind of our opacity masks can uh, really kind of help us get quite a bit of detail there uh, in uh, a very little amount of time. All right.